name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate our sacred mysteries of our faith, let us pause and examine our lives in the ways in which we have sinned, and ask the Lord's forgiveness and strength. Lord Jesus, by your cross you forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, by your resurrection you raise us to new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, each day you feed us with your body and with your blood to heal us and give us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard the Lord saying to me, To the angel of the church in Sardis, write this The one who has seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this. I know your works, that you have a, the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen what is left, which is going to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember me, then, how you accepted and heard. Keep it and repent. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come upon you. However, you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. The victor will thus be dressed in white, and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but will not acknowledge his name in the presence of my Father and of his angels. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Lacodia, write this. The Amen, the faithful and true witness, the source of God's creation, says this. I know your works. I know what you are, neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you, I say, I am rich and affluent, and I have no need of anything. And yet, do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and white garments to put on, so that your shameful nakedness might not be exposed, and buy ointment to smear on your eyes, so that you may see. Those whom I love, I re reapprove and chastise. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him, and he will with me. I will give the victor the right to sit with me on my throne, as I myself first won the victory and sit with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The word of the Lord. Thanks, God. <laughs> I will seek the victor beside me on my throne. I will seek the victor beside me on my throne. He who walks blamelessly and does not just does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart, and slanders not with his tongue. I will seek the victor beside me on my throne. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. I will seek the victor beside me on my throne. 
Who lends not his money to an usury and accepts no bride against the innocent? He who does these things shall never be disturbed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass the way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I exhorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to say what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The church holds up this morning this gospel passage from <clears throat> St. Luke. You're all familiar with it. And the danger with familiarity, it often breeds contempt. Uh, it becomes too familiar. <clears throat> it's the, uh, it's the uh, bolt that becomes tread bare, doesn't, doesn't grab anymore. Use from overuse and over familiarity. And yet, this story of Zacchaeus is particular only to the Gospel of St. Luke. It's found in no other Gospel. And in this brief Account, we find all of the major themes of St. Luke's Gospel telescoped into one episode. We have to admit that Zacchaeus has a pretty crummy resume. You probably wouldn't invite him to your uh, Thanksgiving turkey. Okay, probably wouldn't show up. Um, he is a tax collector. Not only that, he's the chief tax collector. So our ancestors to the IRS. And, uh, and he's a wealthy man, naturally. And so he has all these things against him and the whole tax collecting system would make perhaps even the IRS blush. I don't know if that's possible, but it might. The Romans would pick somebody within the locale where the taxes were collected. And they were a person usually of the native population. And the tax collector was paid a certain percentage of the taxes collected. 
Now, in economics, this is called an economic incentive to get as much as you can by any means you can. The more you get, the more you get. And it's an economic disincentive to be honest and fair. And so tax collectors, especially the chief tax collector, I guess uh, could have been Lois Lerner's uh, child or something, I don't know. If you don't know who Lois Lerner is, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and uh, they were greatly hated, shunned. And uh, they were considered to be among the chief sinners of the community. No respectable folk would have anything to do with a tax collector, much less a chief tax collector. That was out of the question. And if that wasn't bad enough, Zacchaeus was a little fellow. He was shorty. Uh, in other words, he ran around with a Napoleonic complex. Uh, you know the little types that walk around, you know. If you were vertically challenged and the shoe fits, well then do something about it. Um, and that's, uh, he, he, was not, uh, he was not a likable person, pure and simple. And Jesus is passing through Jericho. Jericho was not a place you wanted to stay. You pass through it if you absolutely had to. Uh, it was not an uphill. Uh, it was a rough and tumble and often a very dangerous place, as was the road to Jericho, in which Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. Rough place. And so a more unlikely place for this encounter one would be hard-pressed to imagine. A more unlikely character then this Zacchaeus guy is unlikely for the story. And so Jesus is passing through and the crowd begins to stir and he says that uh, you know, Jesus is passing and he wants to see Jesus. Perhaps out of curiosity as people run to uh, parade so on and so forth to see the celebrity those who are, have a great deal of notoriety, if not notorious. And we may stand on the shoulders of somebody or sit in a chair or climb up on a barricade or get on a light pole or something like that. So he goes up this uh, sycamore tree. Now, right from the beginning, Zacchaeus has every reason, every single reason to be deterred, frustrated, and not to see Jesus. He's a tax collector, he's hated, he's the chief tax collector, he's the chief sinner, and he's someone that everybody holds in ill repute. In addition, he's a little guy. So, because of his lack of height, because of the condemnation of the group, and to make things worse, the religious establishment is just waiting for the opportunity, because they're after bigger fish, to condemn Jesus Christ. So we got to see how he handles this. So he goes up the tree as he's passing, and Jesus looks up. Zacchaeus does not initiate this. Authentic encounter with Jesus Christ is never our initiative. It calls for our response. You see, always calls for our response. We don't initiate this. We don't start this. And he looks up and he sees the little guy up there and he says, Zacchaeus, come down quickly. For today I must stay at your house. He doesn't say, can I stay? I would like to stay. He says, I must stay. It's an imperative. It's an urge 
on the part of Jesus, the desire, which gives you insight into the way of God. It is not we who seek God. Not we who seek God. Many people spend their whole life avoiding God. It is God who seeks us. It's God who is passionately desirous of encounter with us. It's Francis Thompson's Hound of Heaven. And we are the ones who are always dancing and moving and distracted, absorbed in ourselves and in all of the other things of life. You say, well, I, I didn't see Jesus today. I didn't hear Jesus today. Well, maybe if you close the computer and turn off the TV and let Almighty God catch you, you might find that. So Jesus says, come on down, I'm going to stay at your house. I must stay at your house. He comes down quickly and receives him with joy. Two profound Lucan themes. God in search of man and the joy that fills the heart of the person who allows himself or herself to be caught by God. Because God will not set a trap for you. God extends an invitation. And with every invitation, you can say, yes, no, thanks, I'll pass. That's what happens. And Zacchaeus uh, receives him with joy. And what happened? The crowd, and especially the religious establishment, they began to grumble. Grumble. You know, the kind of... Uh, elevator music that you can't quite make out, but it's annoying enough to be there. And they begin to groan. Behold, he has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. That's exactly, exactly why Jesus Christ came. To stay to the house of the sinner, not to the well-off, those who are sure of their own moral superiority and are sure of everybody else's moral inferiority. Why does Jesus need to stay there? They're already perfect. They already have it all together. They're already got the good housekeeping seal of approval. So Jesus goes to a sinner which automatically contaminates him and makes him suspect. Because you don't want to be contaminated with this Zacchaeus guy. He's their version of uh, today's anthrax. Afraid to get it on you. And table fellowship, much less accepting the hospitality of, of, of a sinner, that really indicates just what kind of person you are. You're just one of them. It does indicate what kind of person Jesus is. He's the Lord and Savior who will go to the cross between two sinners. That's the kind of person he is. That's the kind of person, that's the kind of God that has revealed himself to each and every one of you. The God who is found between two thieves nailed to a cross on God. Not because we're perfect or we, we're meritorious or we're morally pure and upright. It's because we're sinful and lost. It's not because of our merit, it's because of our need. Because by ourselves, we cannot save ourselves. No self-improvement course, no amount of therapy, no amount of pharmaceuticals, can heal the wound that touches the very soul of each and every person. It's the reality of sin. It's the reality of self-willfulness. 
that by ourselves, on ourselves, with our own resources, we are powerless to achieve. And so yes, Jesus goes to the house of Zacchaeus in an urgent way. And he goes there and, uh, you know, <laughs> he's already now labeled the sinner and they begin to talk, people do. Which is uh, always a great moral and character defect, talking about others. And Zacchaeus says, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I exhorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. First, Zacchaeus does not back down. That's a very important lesson for Christians. In the face of opposition, you can fold the tent or you can be like a cheap rug and just get out. Or you can stay in your ground. You can stay in your ground. And he stands his ground. Secondly, Zacchaeus does not express regret. As I've said several times before, regret is a cheap imitation form of repentance. Because regret is, I feel bad. Well, my suggestion is you get over yourself. I feel bad. And a lot of things make me feel bad. And I regret it. Uh, but I regret it because I feel bad. Zacchaeus moves to the genuine thing of conversion. Repentance. Action. The concrete change of one's behavior in life. Regret without change is phony. It's not genuine. It doesn't mean anything. You can't build your soul on regret. Repentance, yes. Oh, repentance is much more difficult. In fact, the change of, you know, you know Jesus doesn't begin the public ministry by saying, Regret and reform your lives. He says, repent and reform your lives. You have to, you have to be willing to change. You say, well, well, you just said we can't do it. No, exactly. You have to do the hard thing. Almighty God, on my own, I am powerless and without resources. It is only through amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Through you, my blindness, I now see. In my lostness, you have shown me the way home. By myself, I'm as lost and as blind and filled with sadness and regret as any creature on the face of the earth. But it is only with Christ. It is only with the one who went to Calvary that eyes are opened the homeward journey is found and hearts and minds are changed. Hearts and minds are changed. But that, that openness, that, that, that surrender, that acknowledgement, that in our weakness God will be strong. For God is our strength. If we are strong, why do we need God? If we do it all, and we've achieved it all, and we've arrived, what do we need God for? What do we need the Holy Spirit for? Well, we don't. We don't. Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a descendant of Abraham. That rotten resume that I highlighted Remember, most of you are here old enough to remember. Uh, remember those magic slates where you'd write on them and they had like a piece of cellophane or something and you'd lift them up and the stuff would come off. You remember that? No? 
you must have had a deprived childhood. Um, you just pull it up like that, and it comes off. Well, all of the bad things, tax collector, chief tax collector, sinner, a little guy, uh, Napoleonic complex, uh, all of this kind of stuff. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ alone does that. And written on it, he too is a descendant of Abraham. He too is loved, cared for, redeemed, and saved because he is part of God's holy family. He is part of God's people. In spite of all that, God's judgment is much sounder and rings truer than any human judgment about someone. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. Notice where the activity is. The Son of Man comes to seek. It is God, once again, who is after us. Because you see, from the moment you take your first breath, the evil one has designs on you. He wants you to belong to him. Almighty God has a different design. It's the design of the crucifix. The design of the resurrection. You will not have this one. You will not have him. For he too is the son of Abraham and the Messiah has entered his house. As we leave each and every one of us, each and every one of us, deals with the, Zac the Zacchaeus complex. We deal with that past that is hung around our neck, or to keep it seasonal, that turkey bone that somehow slips there. It doesn't quite go down, and it doesn't quite come up. It stays in the throat, right there. And we walk around with it, always trying to somehow on our own clear our throat. <coughs> and all of those machinations. And it stays right there. Too many people walk with their past because they believe that their past is bigger than God's future for you. And if you believe that, that bone will always stay there. But if you believe that God's future is greater than your past, you thank Almighty God and you live forward not backward, not backward. There are too many people who need to know that they too are a descendant of Abraham and Jesus and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Regardless of the testimony of others and what others think and their evaluations and all of this kind of stuff. Because Jesus wishes to come desires to come, urgently so, to come to your house, to reside in your hearts and minds, to save what was lost. And on this uh, Thanksgiving week, how wonderful to know that God is not the one who hides, God is the one who seeks. God is the one who knocks. God is the one who searches for the lost sheep and the lost coin. What, what, what a tremendous, tremendous mystery and love that is for each and every person. And so, may we, as we lead up to Thanksgiving Day, 
May we be open to that grace. And let Jesus come to our house. And let us go even perhaps a step further. May we indeed be messengers to those in our families, to those we know, to those around us, perhaps in the office or in school or wherever we are, and say, Jesus Christ wishes to come to your house. Don't lose hope. Let the Savior catch you. What a tremendous gift you will have given them. And what a tremendous cause for joy and celebration in the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand. Let us pray for all of our religious leaders that they may be men and women outstanding in faith, and that they may truly care for those entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our civic and governmental leaders, that they may be men and women outstanding in virtue, that they indeed may work for the common good and be ever mindful of the poor and always promote the dignity and the sacredness of human life. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all of our relatives and friends who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, that they may indeed be touched by the healing and strengthening graces of Jesus, the divine physician, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let us remember all of those who still suffer, those who lost loved ones, friends, and property, and so on and so forth, in the, uh, in the terrible fires, that people of that people of goodwill everywhere may indeed respond to their needs in the best of their ability and according to their means. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And on this uh, Tuesday, we ask that the Lord will let his perpetual light shine on all of our relatives and friends who have died. And especially we remember this morning, uh, Ronald, the hell that he indeed may rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Lord. Father, we present all of our prayers to you. You search our hearts and you know what we need. May we each day welcome you into our house and may we be instruments of your grace in our daily living. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become for us our spiritual drink.
the prize of everlasting and eternal life. We pray this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for justice through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so our voices blend with all the choirs of our angels, angels, and saints as we pray. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God bless us. Have and earth and your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the God of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and the resurrection of the again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring heart to the fullness of charity, that of Francis, our Pope, our Lord Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have done your will throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The and the power and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. 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 Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you.
Lamb of God, peace.
Let us pray. <coughs> we have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity. We pray this. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, be with you. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, send upon you and remain forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth the masses in. Amen. Amen. Amen.